30 years in IT, but my passion is motorcycles. That passion has sent me on a journey to try and experience every motorcycle possible to not only learn about the bikes, but also myself. Share the journey and let's enjoy the ride together. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. This bike was unexpected today. When I came here, I came here for the Speed 400, Scrambler 400. I didn't expect to see a Daytona 660 on the floor and for the sales manager to say you want to ride it <laughs> so you, you all have known me i'm not going to turn down the chance to ride a bike especially this bike i love the daytonas i'm an owner of a 675 i rode it loved it bought it immediately the 660 is not the 675 it's a little bit more of an upright more streetable sport bike this is also an inline triple, which is claiming 94 brake horsepower at 11,250 RPMs and 51 foot pounds of torque at 8,250 RPMs. Now I am depressed about this bike because it's not a Daytona 675. It's not the super sport style riding position, but you can't have everything in this world. And if this bike is gonna sell for Triumph, fantastic. So up front, we have a 120-70-17 front tire with 310 millimeter discs, two of them. We have four piston calipers, Triumph branded. I'm not sure who makes these. We have an inverted non-adjustable front suspension, which for the category, for the price point, would I have liked to have some adjustability? Yeah, I would have, but Nah, not really that big of a deal. You do have steel braided brake lines as well. So in the rear, we have a 180-55-17 tire with a 220 millimeter disc. This is chain driven. You do have a single piston rear brake on this bike. Okay, so seat height claimed is 31.88 inches. I am five foot nine, 220 pounds. And at a stand, I am on the balls of my feet. Now when I get into rider position, right here, it's, it's an aggressive riding position, but not overly aggressive, which I'm super excited to feel that because I wasn't, I wasn't super happy about this versus the Daytona 675 because I wanted a rider position here more super sport style but it's a little bit more aggressive than I thought which is great now all of that being said you're not gonna know if you like a bike until you go ride it so let's gear up and let's hit the road on this brand new 2024 Daytona 660 all right ladies and gentlemen Daytona 660 time Let's get a sound check. All right, so we got that 660 sound. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go hit the road. Okay, this bike does not have a quick shifter. I realize as I get going. And the mirror and the mirror is not in the right spot, but I'm not gonna change it now because my camera's pointed to me. of power I mean this bike is covering the same engine that is in the Trident 660 that being said this does have a little bit more power than the Trident from 81 to 95 or 94 I mean it's mm. so 
way more comfortable than the Daytona 675 though. Way more comfortable. Yeah, the riding position is really quite nice. To be honest. Really, really quite nice. I don't like the fact that it doesn't have an adjustable clutch lever. This bike feels heavier by a little bit also. I mean, I think it's claiming 440 on the wet weight, which isn't bad, right? Fourth gear, 60 mile an hour, 6,000 RPMs. This bike has 20 miles on it. It's got plenty of power. Plenty of power. No wind protection, really. I mean, even in tuck, still feeling the wind quite a bit. Get into a rider position. It's not bad. It really isn't. It's not bad. It wouldn't work. by it. Would I trade my 675 in for this? No. No, I wouldn't. And I'm old. <laughs> so, I, I still, I just, I want my Super Sport. And the Daytona 675 is my Super Sport. The suspension is actually not bad. I mean, I'm purposely trying to hit some bumps here and yeah the suspension can, just kind of holds up Still quick. No cruise control. Kind of wish it had that. Especially with the fact that, I mean, it's more of a around the city, it's more of a daily sport bike than your regular super sport. So I wish it had things like cruise control. So you can set the cruise and relax just a little bit more. Do I want more upright risers? Um, no, because that's not the riding position I want to be in. The height of the foot pegs is kind of right where I'd want it to be, in all honesty. So, brakes are solid. Woohoo!
three, two, one. Not a great start. Going uphill a little bit. But still, it was fun. Oh boy. It does make, smile. It does make me smile though. <laughs> I like it more than I thought I would. I mean, you, when you're coming off the 675, which is just raw, super sport styling and quick and powerful. When you're coming off of that and you go to this, it's it's a different ride. It really is. It's a different ride. And I'm not saying that it's bad. It's just different. Let's see if we can flip a U-turn. Just a little outside too. Could have gotten tighter if I'd gone faster, pushed it a little bit, but again, in your normal low speed handling, it was fine. Can't complain. And I don't know what I forget what the wheelbase is, something like 56, maybe 57. Might be be lower than that, but it, I'll put it on the screen. I mean, I said it in my Moto Bob comment about how disappointed I was that this wasn't the 765. I mean, I know they made the Moto 2s, but or I just kind of wanted a standard Super Sport style 765. You know, the Moto 2s were great, but they're really expensive. I mean, if they could have brought out a Daytona 6, or if they could have brought out a Daytona 765 with the adjustable suspension built off of the RS and priced it at 13000 that bike would be a solid competitor in the Super Sport class. Would I have been happier if this bike was probably $8,500? Yeah. If it was $8,500, it would be a, you know kind of a no-brainer if you're looking for a middleweight sport bike. good punch to it. It has some good punch to it. Brakes. The brakes are really good. Wow. I got thrown forward. I didn't think I was going to like this bike, honestly. I didn't think I would. I thought I was going to hate it because it isn't the Daytona 675. It isn't that class of bike. But as I ride it, hmm. and I know the complaints about the dash and everything, oh, it should have a TFT. Look, this little LCD TFT mix, honestly, it's fine. It's just coming off the trident. It displays every single thing that I need it to display, and I think it's really nice. I really do. All right. Neutral. Kickstand behind the pegs. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Daytona 660, 2024. <sighs> For a bike that I was expecting to hate, I don't. I don't hate it. I like it. I like the look. I like the sound. Man, I like the way it feels. <laughs> it's a good bike. It's a really good bike. Wow. I, am, I can't believe I got to ride this today. <laughs> I love doing this channel. I love being with everybody and sharing all this stuff with everybody.
it's just a joy for me. This is not a job. This is a joy. Everybody stay safe. And as always, enjoy the ride. So turn your back.